wild ghouls out there. It's your two favorite movie, Ghostbusters, back here for Cinefellas. I am Logan Spangler. That's my good mate over there. And I'm Henry Kuhn. And tonight we have a great review for everybody out there. It's a brand new Ghostbusters film. It just came out last week, and we both got an opportunity to check it out. And here's our review of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. <laughs> Yeah, that's right. These two wild rascals are huge Ghostbusters fans, been fans since we were kids. You know, the original movie's coming out, I think, a year before I was born, 84. But, you know, growing up on these, of course, the Ghostbusters cartoon, they had that really horrendous one that came out in 2016. Of course, a few years ago, Jason Reitman brought us Ghostbusters Afterlife, and now this is the sequel, I guess, to that uh, being helmed by Gil Keenan directing this film. Of course, we're talking about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire and the Spangler family returns here. Of course, you have Gary, Paul Rudd <laughs> returning with the family and they're back in New York City at the old firehouse. New and old Ghostbusters are unite basically to take out this evil force that's unleashed from this artifact, essentially, that's going to bring a new ice age and they have to stop you know, of course, this evil entity, which, you know, brings in a lot of, you know, familiar ghosts along the way. Afterlife really rebooted the franchise and brought this new cast. The only thing that I felt was missing from that one, um, you know, obviously, besides Harold Ramey's uh, R.I.P., was New York. You know, New York feels so seminal in the Ghostbusters lore that when they, you know, were not in New York in the first one, I felt like that was missing. But we're thrust right back into the heart of the city. They're back in the firehouse and it, you know, feels like uh, good old times. We have the family out right away in the opening scene, chasing ghosts down, you know, the middle of Times Square, basically. Um, and it has to do with, uh, you know, obviously Callie played by Carrie Coon. Gary is now part of the uh, family, basically. He's the stepdad now. Um, and then you have Trevor Spengler and then you have Phoebe. And Phoebe being underage is a really uh, big point in this film. You know, she's too young to be doing these dangerous missions along with the family. And she's getting a lot of flack from, you know, not only her family, but from the public when they find out she's been out there ghost busting too. So um, it's, it really focuses this time um, on, uh, you know, the younger cast here as it should with Finn, Finn Wolfhard having less to do this time than the last movie. I felt it's mainly Phoebe's movie. And uh, yeah, we're right back in New York City and Winston Zeddemore is, you know, this big entrepreneur now. He's, you know, on the, the Fortune 500 list. He has a lot of capital raised and he's been putting it all into the research station um, where they're doing a lot of research involving ghosts. And, um, you know, it, this movie has to do with the containment unit basically filling up the old one and they're going to have to move all these old ghosts into the newer, higher capacity. Essentially, um, infinity, you know, you have as much room, limitless room there for ghosts in this new one, but they're going to have to get the old ghosts into the new containment unit. And that's, of course, where everything goes wrong. Yeah, as you were saying, this is really focused on the kids this time around. Um, you know, more than the first one, I thought uh, Phoebe Spangler, played by McKenna Grace, great actress, young actress, been in some horror flicks. Really like seeing her career get, you know, bigger and bigger here but she was really fantastic as you said Finn Wolfhard didn't have much to do but you know he was fun you know they had a, a nice brother sister mm -hmm. relationship you know not getting along the Ecto-1 throughout New York City blasting buildings destroying massive brick <laughs> buildings that have been there for hundreds of years and never think about that trying to stop these ghosts and like hey wait a second pump the brakes you know we shouldn't be doing this dangerous kind of stuff we're kids you know high school junior high so they really kind of look at that and of course you know bringing back uh, William Atherton's character he plays the mayor Walter Peck from the original mm -hmm. film of course you know Murray was always poking fun at him but him playing the mayor and he's like you, you know we have to put a stop to this as he's always trying to do put a stop to the Ghostbusters and it's really you know entertaining him trying to be you know the villain in this movie as well and also throwing in the new villain that's bringing back, you know, this sort of ice age they're trying to stop. Yeah, this ancient artifact that they find um, in the opening scene, it goes back in time to, you know, early New York City, firefighters there going into this room, coming across this artifact that essentially, you know, freezes everybody. And, uh, you know, that's the that's the big thing with the villain here, um, wanting to bring about a second ice age. And, you know, New York City, everybody's going to freeze. It's in the middle of the summer there. There's the cool beach scene. Uh, that we saw in the trailer 
um, when the villain finally does come. It takes a while for the villain to show up. That was one thing that we had talked about when we were discussing the film. Like it felt like they should have introduced him and fleshed out the villain a little more. Um, but when he does finally show up, it has some pretty cool scenes with the with it coming out on the beach and you know the big icicles forming and you know all this mayhem going on in the city. And when not only the new villain comes out, but it releases all the older ghosts. So it really feels chaotic and crazy. And it's going to be up to this, you know, new family of Ghostbusters, essentially. Um, and they're going to have to go back and recruit the old crew who we see, you know, everybody, obviously, minus Harold Ramey there coming back. We even have Annie Potts come back um, in her role. And she suits up this time, which is pretty cool. So really, it's a, it's a good blend of the old and new and really, you know, whereas the last one was passing the torch, this one really feels like the torch has been completely passed now. And if they do end up making any other films, it's going to be this young cast and basically moving forward. There's also a lot of spinoff opportunities, too, from uh, the events of the movie. Ghostbusters, what do you want? <laughs> Annie Potts, I love her. I can't do the New York accent. I'm absolutely not from there. But yeah, I love seeing her again. I loved her like her character in the cartoon back in the day too. I always thought she was an intricate part to uh, the Ghostbusters and the team and her coming back was really essential. I thought to this, the old and the new, as you said, already passing the torch down, but they're there to guide them and help them be the backup when, you know, shit hits the fan essentially when it starts freezing over, it's breaking open the containment unit, you know, this Graca, this bad villain, um, you know, coming back, he's trying to take all these ghosts and take over the world, right? So, you know, breaking that open, they have to put their minds together, heads together, how they're going to stop this. And it really has to do with all of them, you know, thinking and, and trying, how how can we stop this? And of course, with ice, you think of fire, right? Fire, melting ice. And that's when it, it introduces Nadim's character, Camille <laughs> Nagiani, huge fan of his. I love comedic actor, loved him in Portlandia. He's just a great actor, but he's basically like the heir to being the fire master. It's been in his family for a long time and sets up his his uh, character. It's pretty funny learning how to to use the fire with the, the lighter and everything was really cool. Yeah, there's a lot of funny moments in this film, a lot from Kumail. And then you also have Patton Oswald in there in a small role who has some funny stuff to do. And Paul Rudd, I felt like he was a lot funnier and had more to do in this film and is dealing with, you know, Phoebe, you know, getting used to him being in the family now too, and trying to not be pushy and try to, you know, act like the the dad. He's not trying to move in and take over. Um, but, uh, you know, he does a good job playing the dad and has a lot of comedic moments. You know, he's like, Bustin makes me feel good. You know, what, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, uh, but he's funny. Uh, Gary Gruberson, who I guess is now Gary Spengler. I don't know. They never really say if they get married or did they? I'm, I'm assuming that uh, they're married now. They but never really said that. Yeah, he was just kind yeah. of like the dad. So I don't know. I didn't think so either. It really does have a lot of fun moments. This film does um, take a lot of, uh, you know, nostalgia and reminded me a lot of the old cartoon from back in the day, you know, with a lot more. Uh, the villains were fun and all the research and new gadgets that they had. I felt like it was straight from the cartoon. They used drones in this with ghost traps and the whole research facility that Winston, uh, you know, is bankrolling was really cool. They had some really neat stuff in there. And yeah, I, I had a really fun time with this movie. We had heard a lot of negative reviews going into this. So that kind of brought me down. But watching this film, I had a great time. And, you know, pretty much everybody that actually did go out to see this in the theater had a good time. So it's unfortunate that uh, it dropped so much in its second week here. We recommend everybody go see this. Go see it in the theaters before it's taken out and you have to wait to watch it at home. But it, it is a fun movie. And I even liked it a little more than Afterlife, I think. I think New York brought me back. And it was a lot of fun. Is it perfect? No. You know, there's some it takes too long to get to the villain um and we had talked about some other problems so any uh, issues that you came across yeah i think just the the only main issues i had with this was the ending was rushed i think like you know fleshing out the villain like halfway through the movie instead of the last part of the movie i think it would have been a lot better but everything else and like the nostalgia factor going back to new york city you know where it all started reuniting the old with the new i thought it was really amazing bringing back Ackroyd and 
Ernie Hudson and Bill Murray, they had a, a smaller part, but of course he's always hilarious. You know, characters from the first movies, you know, familiar ghosts from the originals without spoiling too much were amazing. Mm-hmm. All the callbacks, you know, of course, bringing back Walter Peck too, the, the, the main bad guy in the originals. Uh, yeah. That was cool. And him playing the mayor too. The major issues I had were really not the cast. I think it was just a little rushed mm-hmm. and the, the villain yeah. was a little cartoony, you know, like the real ghost yeah. cartoon. That's what it felt like, really cartoony. It just fleshed out a little more, brought in, introduced a little earlier, I think. It would have been a pretty perfect movie to me. I don't understand the hate with this. Great time with this, being a huge fan of this and going back to New York City. I thought they did a great job. And Ernie Hudson, I thought, was like the MVP of this movie, seeing him shine. And of course, Phoebe as well. Yeah. Another thing that we forgot to mention was Phoebe's character, like falling in love with a ghost, essentially, which was kind of out of left field. And I didn't really understand why they went that way, but uh, they did. So it got, it had a little woke moment in it, but it, it really didn't ruin the movie or anything. It was just like, why? Well, I don't know why they chose for that storyline, but they did. It's been nice to see Rick Moranis back yes. um, in addition. Um, but uh, overall, I had a blast with the film and uh, pre-ordered the 4K. I'll, I'll be watching it again. And when my son's old enough, you know, and wants to watch it, we can definitely watch this. It's a good family movie. Yeah, this is definitely a movie I'd probably go receive at the movie theater and definitely a movie I'd pick up for the home collection since I have all of them already. But I actually really enjoyed this as well. And I like this a little more than uh, Afterlife. I thought they fleshed out more of the characters, just the villain be probably being the weakest part. But I like the introduction of Nadim and the Firemaster and what this, all the lore and all this has to do with that. And mm-hmm. obviously bringing it to a new generation with a research facility in New York, introducing some new characters and them all coming together to, to take out the bad guy. And the one shot I absolutely love that's in the trailer, of course, is when the storm is coming over the beach. I loved the yeah. way that shot and all the awesome. ice starts coming out. I thought it was really, really great CGI work. And I thought all the ghosts looked really good too with the CGI. So I was pretty impressed. That being said, I'm going to give Ghostbusters Frozen Empire now playing in cinemas around the globe. I'm going to give it a four out of five. Hmm. Phoebe Spangler hair pieces. And I too, I'm going to give Ghostbusters Frozen Empire a four out of five. Nadim hair pieces. I want to hear from all you wild ghouls and goblins out there. What did you like about Ghostbusters Frozen Empire? What didn't you like about it? What's your favorite film in the franchise? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to shoot. Subscribe. Also, check out these wild rascals on Facebook, X, and Instagram, and our website, cinefells.com, for the latest, greatest TV, movie, news, and reviews. So thank all you Ghostbusters out there for watching our review of Ghostbusters Frozen Empire. And until the next Cinefellas Movie Review, I'm Uncle Henry Gruberson. And I'm Uncle Logan Spangler, signing out until the next movie review. Jeez. Jeez.